Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the episode of Coffees for Closers. Today, what we're going to be doing is a little bit of a roundtable Q and A uh, with some of our sales guys. They're going to be going through their questions, their queries, their doubtful points, and hopefully, you guys can gain some insight. Uh, might even do a little bit of role playing. We'll see what happens. Could get crazy. All right, cue the intro. Ex Special Forces sniper turned entrepreneur. I've scaled numerous businesses to eight figures. My name is Matt Ryder. This is my podcast, and I'm telling you to put that coffee down down not all at once though like time out guys not all at once i can't handle this all right jake i know you got some questions oh cameron cameron ball from adelaide yeah so um <laughs> so i i'm pretty new to this one of these accounts i'm selling so i got an objection that i wasn't really sure okay. how to overcome my handle i think it's just like a variance of like this is something about mastering better. deals yeah, so some something along the lines of, okay. of maybe yep. mastery of deals. So okay. effectively the guy like got to the end and then I only knew the date of the next event, but he couldn't make that event and I have no means to go and take a deposit or anything like that. So he didn't want to go forward because he wasn't sure if he could make the the event. Yep. Right. So, so like when in doubt, just like uh you take um like an emotional deposit, you know, like the old Seinfeld, anyone can just take the reservation. You just do mm-hmm. it that way. You don't write anything down. You don't, because obviously we can't store that stuff. So it's like, you just take it. And then that's an emotional commitment. Mm -hmm. Right? So it'd be like, and then my commitment to you is in the next 24 hours, I'll tell you all the dates that you can have access to over the next X, Y, Z. And if if they get access to something before that, right? So you just do the Seinfeld approach. Just take the reservation. Mm Mm-hmm. Because like, it's the same thing as if someone says like, oh, hey, like I'm 100% in, I just don't have like my card on me right now. That's not a problem. Um, Do you have a bank account? Yep, sweet. Okay, do you know your bank account details? Perfect. Okay, give me those. Bang, bang, bang. Even though you can't take it because it's not like, it's just about taking like, and it's 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 a, it's a just a deeper level of emotional commitment, mm-hmm. right? Then from there, you call them back and you go, hey man, how did everything go? Did you have a good day? Sweet. Hey, just wanted to make sure, did you manage to find your credit card? Oh yeah, perfect, dude. Hey, do you mind if I grab those details because I wasn't able to run the bank account, right? Because like, it's just about, it's like the, one of the key things about being a salesperson is like you can never be flustered by a situation. So it's yeah. just like, yeah, man, cool. PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, credit card, Visa, MasterCard. You know what I mean? Like Bitcoin, like, like Bitcoin carry pigeon, what do we got here? <laughs> right, like there's just, um, so it's about like just kind of working your way through to get that level of commitment because like then like emotionally they've paid. Mm-hmm. like and emotionally paying is as good as physically paying because like that's already done in their mind so like the the amount of like buyer's remorse they get from from that is far less ironically than if they just kind of you know yeah okay i, I, I think i was just that's the thing is i was just like kind of flustered because i didn't really know the dates on you the next day and it's just yeah. like so what i would do is i would create like especially when you're doing stuff with events like one of the things i used to sell had a quarterly mastermind and they would all and i would never mention it simply because I would always get hit up with the dates, right? But before I figured out not to mention it, right? I just had a PDF document with all the dates. So what I would do, man, is I would, if I were you, I would go through, have a look at the offer stack of what they get pre-event, right? Mm -hmm. And then I would manipulate your pitch um, to emphasize the importance of the pre-work and the event equally, Mm -hmm. right? So like, if you know there's an event coming up very soon, then what you do is you like, you can skew it more towards the event. If you know there's an event in four months, you skew it more away from the event. It's like, yeah, the reason why we want you to have at least a three month runway before the event is so that you can actually have the best opportunity to be able to absorb the information, have the most productive event possible. It's like, all right, the reason why we want you to go to this next event, which is coming up in three weeks is because we really want you to start taking action on your goals quickly and being in front of barren, Ken Coney, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right, you know? So does that make sense? Oh, yeah, no, I don't, that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense, yeah. yeah. I'll have to go through the pre-work stuff, but I think there's something I can do in terms of like getting a deal first before the event if it's super far away so they can actually go through it with a live deal, that kind of thing. Yeah, because like they get access to the portal immediately. You know, like once they buy, they get access to all that offer stack. Then it's mm-hmm. the event, like... If you, if you have done some of the work before the event, you will have a better event. Yeah. Ask better questions. Make sense? Yeah. All right. Perfect. Uh, Tanner? 
Yeah, just gonna a little bit similar, but um, so I'm on funding for scale the account there. Okay. Um, I've got a question for you on when you get to the end of the call. You know, you run through everything, perfect fit for the person, and they're all excited about it. And then it's seemingly right in between like a logistical or a smokescreen objection, and you can't really tell which side it kind of leans on because they're super excited about it with you know hopping in you know paying and, and getting access to everything but okay on the same time they're like oh no 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 i still need you know like two or three weeks to get the funding together to hop in and, and make it work yeah so like how would you do with that like what's your process so i try to go through to get like the the open wallet to say you know okay so why don't we do this why don't we just kind of um take initial credit card deals and or credit card you know number or however you want to pay for that and then just kind of hold until you've reached a point of hey you know what got the funds in there you know got the green light we're all good to go and then we can just go from there okay so what I'm, a, I'm trying what to work on what, what objection a better way. they actually say um so you said hey man how do you want to proceed from here and they went i really want to do it I'm 100% in. This is very exciting. This is the greatest thing I've ever heard. I just need mm -hmm. two weeks to get my funds together. And yeah, you went, much. give me your credit card. And we'll sort it out later. Is that what you said? Um, I didn't say it quite like that. Obviously. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thankfully. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, so let's discuss. Uh, let's go with Jake. Yo. What is your thought process behind that particular objection? Uh, the fact that somebody wants to delay getting started due to the fact that they don't have the funding right now. Yeah. So like, again, so we got to have a process for everything, right? Yeah. And with objection handling, the more uniformed and ubiquitous your process is, the easier everything will be. So yeah. the mm -hmm. problem is you made an assumption uh, that it was a either like real or fake, right? Whereas the answer is you don't know whether that's logistical or fear. You just you don't you cannot know that. Right. right. So are we default back to our training, which is I understand you're new, but which is logistical money always. Mm -hmm. So if we look at like a hierarchy of objections, logistical money is going to take constitute 80 percent of all of your legitimate objections. Right. <laughs> right? Maybe mm -hmm. even 90 percent. So the first thing we do is yeah, that that's that's not a problem. Um, and I guess like money aside. Like if, if you did have the funding available right now, would this be the answer for you? They go, well, yeah. And they go, do, do you mind telling me why? They go, this and this and this. And go, okay, well, that makes sense, I guess. And I guess what are some ways where you can come up with the funding to where you can actually get the training so you can X, Y, Z? Like, what do we think we can do? They go, well, I think maybe I could do this or I could do this, you know, but I really need a couple of weeks. You go, okay. But like, so there are some methods. Now, is it is it is it more the upfront payment that is difficult for you. If I could break that up into more digestible chunks, would that be would that be easier for you? Which is why you have to pitch paid in full. Mm -hmm. I hate hearing pitches that say it's ten grand or four payments to three grand. Like I hate that. It's just you're shooting yourself in the foot every time, because like now you've got nowhere to roll that rock. You're on level right. ground instead of trying to roll downhill, right? So immediately you're like, if I could break it up, you're like, oh, you can do that. Yeah, we can do that. Would you like me to break that down for you? Yeah, I could. All right. Well, what we typically do for some of our clients, because as you can imagine, like they don't necessarily have the skills to be able to make the money to be able to afford that upfront payment. Um, so what, you know, uh, some more of our successful clients have done in the past is that they've done XYZ payment plan over XYZ time. Um, would that be easier for you? Notice how I don't say, do you want to do it? I said, would that be easier for you? They say, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it would be. Okay, so that would work within your current budgetary constraints? Yes, it would. Okay, so how would you like to proceed from here? Right? So now we know it's gone. It's done. No yeah. longer exists. Okay? So we, we have now resolved a part of that objection, but we have resolved that, that part completely. So now we can move on to the next component. Because like objections is like it's being given uh, like a puzzle and you have to kind of figure out like what, what part of the puzzle is what, but you have to complete 
the borders first, then you can work your way in. If you try and kind of just work random parts of the puzzle, like there's got to be a system behind it. So that open wallet test is fine. Um, that's very much of a, uh, it's a very, you know, I know the, the person who really advocates for that, and it's not like it's a bad methodology, but it's a methodology that you want to do like at a specific part at a specific time. Otherwise, what will happen is that you will do the open wallet test, they'll say no, and then you'll immediately assume it's a mindset issue. Mm. Right, which it doesn't necessarily have to be. That's an oversimplified uh, view of humans and sales. Right? Does that make sense? So let's go through mm -hmm. and let's role play that. Gabe, if I could have you be the sales guy, would that be all right? Um, let's, uh, let's do it. Tanner, if you could be the prospect, just kind of give the same, a similar objection. We'll kind of go through a role play. Okay. Yeah. So Tanner, uh, would that, would that be appropriate or how, how do you want to proceed? Um, yeah, I mean, I love, love the program It it all, seems really good, but yeah, I just, I just can't afford it right now. Yeah. That's not a problem, man. Um, curious though, like let's, Put money aside for a second like if you had the money like would this would this be the answer for you i think so yeah 100 percent. why why do you feel like it would be though well i feel like it would just really help me to you know get to xyz that i've really been wanting to hit mm -hmm. okay then and do you feel like with the the training and the support and accountability that you would actually be able to you know hit that xyz goal that we were talking about i think so mm -hmm. okay so totally understand like from what you're telling me that money might be an issue right i guess how do you feel like you could you know find the funding so that you can actually get into this program so that you can achieve xyz um well i would really just need maybe a couple of weeks to let the business grow a little bit more and then i could just take it right from there and hop in what do you mean by let the business grow a little bit more? Yeah, bring in more revenue. Okay. Like bring in more revenue with the current strategy that you have. Mm -hmm. Can I can I share a perspective with you on that? Sure. So, I mean, if we don't change anything, right, we're going to be in the same place, right? The same kind of problems that you're having now are going to be the same problems that you have in the future. Right. So I guess just around the actual the funding aspect of it, that 8K, how does that actually fit within your budgetary constraints? Um, it's it's a little tight, um, you know, currently with where I'm at now, I don't really have that, which is why I was saying, you know, it'd be easier to wait over the next couple of weeks while I kind of build that up and then we can just hop right in and, and get rolling with it. That makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Um if we were able to break that up for you, let's say over like monthly kind of terms, would that be helpful to you though? Um, it could, but I just, I would just rather hop in all at once. Why is that? Instead of, well, I feel like with the other, I'm, I'm kind of just dragging it out. I'd rather just get it all together and then just get going all at once instead of having, you know, two or three or, or four payments. Just well, you wondering. tell me, you tell me, Tanner, is it more important to have it all at once or is it more important to fix this issue? I mean, fix the issue, definitely. Right. So if we could find a way to actually get you in this, right, and split it up so that you can actually get in and have the accountability so that you can change your situation and solve the problem, like, what do you feel like you would want to do? I probably just get access sooner, I would think. Okay. Do you want to have that conversation? Yeah, let's go ahead and, and do that then. So we can do 2K split over four months. That way, you know, you're not at a burden and you don't have to put it all at once, but you're going to have the accountability, the coaching, and everything to actually change the systems within your business so that we don't have to have this kind of conversation again. Right? Mm -hmm. Would that be appropriate or... I was a dirty man at the proceed? end. I like that. That was really good. Yeah, that was solid. What should we, what job, should we do, brother? Uh, I think the 
2K might be tight, but I think I might be able to do it. All right, perfect. So let's let's break down what happened there. The the really key thing is first of all, just staying super calm and staying really like. You know what I mean, because the moment you get any level, like any level of agitation around a mm-hmm. objection, it's game over, right? Which yeah. is why most people shit the bed on objections, right? Because they like they see it as like, well, well this fucking idiot just move forward. It's like, calm down, bro. Like, we have to understand that, like, it, it's there's there is no requirement, regardless of what someone has said, for someone to act in a manner that is consistent with their words. There is no legal or moral requirement to do so. It's frustrating sometimes to see people not do it. However, these are not our friends and family. These are just random strangers. So we don't need to be frustrated over their behavior. Straight up. They will do what they will do. Right? Um, So I think that's one thing that Gabe does especially well, is kind of just staying in the saddle and being super cool. I really liked that thing at the end where you're like, so we don't have to keep having this conversation. Because that's like, that's a very, very subtle, but ingraining, like a foreshadowing of like, if this doesn't change, we're just going to keep, this is going to keep being how it is. Those are very, very good. I'm going to steal that for sure. Um, So, but you saw like there was a, there was a real method to it and it was breaking down each problem individually as they come in. Otherwise you end up getting really overwhelmed with the conversation. You know, like if someone goes, yeah, man, this sounds really good and I'm 100% in it. And I just really need to kind of run about my business partner, like my CFO, my head of sales, and, you know, maybe my accountant just to make sure that, like, you know, this is actually going to kind of get us results. But, like, I think if you just kind of send me an email with everything we've gone through today and then we can meet up, like, maybe in a week or two, would that sound good? It's like, all right. What do we do from there? Yeah, man, that's not a problem. I'm more than happy to do all that. Um, but, like, money aside, do you feel like this would work for you? Just ignore it. Just do my thing. I'm going to do my process. Right. Um, the big advantage, like I've said before in sales, is that you know what's about to happen. You know what we're doing here. That person, it's like, you know, that person is just kind of taking it as it comes. So it's the difference between someone doing like a scripted rehearsed keynote and then like being judged against someone who's just going off the cuff for the first time. Like it's a like you would just decimate them, you know? So that's that's a distinct advantage that we have. That was really good, though. So I think for you, Tanner, it's like uh, work on that objection handling matrix, right? Um, mm-hmm. Have a really, really clear and defined pathway. And then from there, kind of like um, try to like consciously not get distracted by what's being said. Make sure that you resolve your component and you just do your process almost regardless of what the person's saying. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that. No worries. Uh, more questions. So, are you? Um, how do I explain it? Like, I was watching one of the calls that Marco did from the the, the bonus content in the portal, and he mentioned that like before you go into the call, like you should have an idea of like what problem you're solving, um, mm-hmm. so that you can kind of drive all the questions and problem awareness to to that point. Um, so is that like the, I mean, it's coming from Marco, so obviously it has like some merit, but like it, what happens if like, it comes from somebody that, what, what if it's like, um, I don't know what I'm like trying to like say here. Me either. But yeah. Yeah. Let me, um, let me circle back and let me, uh, collect my you're thoughts. You're fired. <laughs> no, I think if I, if I can break down what you're trying to say is, uh, how do you have a presupposition of problem? When you exactly. don't know when, like yeah, when you don't yeah. know what that person's problem is going to be, is that is that what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I think I fucking like. Do I assume the problem or do I go into it Big trying brain. to figure out? Big you brain. read my mind, man. Yeah, bro. Um, so like you know um, what you're doing. Okay, so this is basically how it works. Like your every account will have like uh, two to three avatars or problem buckets of person, and the occasional person will fully be outside of that realm, right? However. Uh, like because of the marketing and the messaging is the same for everybody, right? Like the type of person that will want to, um, apply, uh, will have a similar problem set, right? So like, if we're having a look at like PG, for example, like you could break down, if you went through like every call you'd had, right. And you gave it to an AI and was like, give me the three most common problems. They would just, it would be like 90% of people would fall into one of those three buckets. 
right? So what that means is that like in connecting or connective, it's now connective. I don't know if you guys know that. We wow. changed the language, really evolving the discipline. Um, so uh, in connective stage, what we're looking to do is uncover what it is they want, right? In situation phase, we're looking to uh, get the prospect to tell themselves their current situation because most people don't really think about it. And then like in, and then uh, in those two phases, us as the salesperson is really looking to full is to figure out what avatar we're speaking to. Like if I look at like, say seventh level is a really easy one, right? It's just like, are we looking at a successful salesperson who is looking to really skyrocket their results? Or are we looking for a brokey sales guy who wants to figure out how to be not brokey? That makes sense. Like those are the two avatars. And then you could break that down into like B2C versus B2B, I guess. But like at the end of the day, it's the same shit, right? So like we're looking at those two. For PEG, you're going to be looking at like people who have a lot of money who are looking for alternate investment vehicles, right? Like alternative investment vehicles. Or you're looking at people who see the traditional style of investment as just like not worth putting their limited amount of funds in. So they want to be able to leverage even though they have money, but it's not tons, but they want to be able to leverage like that limited amount so they can get maximum return. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. so you yeah. might be looking at like those two, like maybe there's three, you've had a lot more conversations than I have. Maybe the yeah, no, 85 year olds who don't know why they're there. Right. So, yeah, yeah. right. So yeah. like you, you need to be able to go like, okay, first and foremost, what is the problem in which we solve? So every business only serves to do three things right? Or two of these three things. One is fulfill an emotional need. One is to solve a problem. And the third is to do that at a profit. That's business. Solve problem, fulfill emotional need, do so at a profit. Right? Otherwise, like, if you don't solve a problem, you don't feel an emotional need. Why are you here? Like, there's literally nothing that you could, there's nothing that doesn't do one of those things. Even like, like Pagani, right? Like Pagani doesn't solve a problem but it does fulfill an emotional need to have a bespoke supercar, right? To be able to rock up to your supercar friends and be like, I got this one. You guys can't even get it. That's why like Ferrari limits. You can't just go and buy a fucking, uh, you know, like one of the tippity top Ferraris. You can't, you're not allowed to, All right? That's the whole point of it, right? So they're fulfilling an emotional need by putting you in the boys club, right? Now, something like uh, seventh level solves a legitimate problem of people not having an understanding of how to do their sales calls effectively right? Like they just don't have a process and to do so at a profit is essential. Otherwise you can't continue to do it. Right? So, uh, you need to have a good understanding as to like, if you do both, if you fulfill emotional needs and solve a problem, fantastic, but really think about that. And I think like people who really understand their offers and who are really good at selling, the first thing they do is really understand the problems in which the business solves. That's why like the first thing I'll do as soon as I get into a new account is just go through all the marketing funnels, have a look at the program, right? Um, look at the testimonials, like I'll segment the testimonials. I'll be like, all right, well, like what problem was solved? Because if you have a look at testimonials, that's the easiest way to figure out what problems are being solved. Right? Because people will say, oh, I got to fucking 50K a month because, and it's the after the because, that's what. I learned how to handle objections. Sweet. I learned a better process that I could make, <coughs> right? <coughs> I learned how to reduce sales resistance. I learned how to invest my money in higher yield things at a lower, you know, whatever, whatever it may be. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's sort of the key to that question is sort of thinking and then writing it out. And then from there, you'll start, if you write out the buckets, then from there, you'll be able to like think in your head, oh, this person really falls into, especially like if you're selling like a biz op or whatever, it's going to be like, are they nine to fiver looking to escape or are they successful person looking to add on? Those are the two buckets. Then from there, it's a, it's a slightly different version of the same conversation. Mm. Right? Right. So like for PEG, it's like, People who are successful have excess money. They're looking to invest it. 
So like that's like a that's like a they're they're running towards something. But then like sometimes I'll occasionally get like a biz op who like doesn't want to continue running the store. And that's more of like a like a like the like that with that I think I messed it up. The people who like come to us because they don't like what they're doing. Obviously, that's more of like a biz op. And then the people who have money but they just want to invest it into something that's more like lucrative. That's more of like they're fulfilling, like they're running towards something compared to running away from something. Solving a problem versus fulfilling a need. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Biz op and best are very similar. Completely different offers, but very similar avatars of people. What PG invests? Yeah, for sure. Because you're looking at like um, it's just an alternative investment strategy, right? One is like yep. businesses, and one is land acquisition. Both equally expensive, right? In terms of like, I mean, like you can do no money down shit, but you can also buy businesses no money down. Just ask Cameron, right? So cool. Yeah, right. right? So um, yeah, like it's they're all like um, they're all somewhat similar. You know what I mean? You just kind of got to really think about it and go like, what problems do I really solve? Like I remember when I was selling for TGC. I was like, man, like what problem do we really solve? And then, so I went back through and like listened to sales calls and I listened to triages and I was like, mm. I was like, all right. And I had a look at the applications coming through and it was like, there was two types. There was successful guy that can't scale, right? Just due to like having no systems and no processes. And then there was the guy that was like working 90 hours a week in the business, like on the tools, like a maniac, no profit, it's fucking struggling but still like, you know, has turnover, for example, like, but like literally doesn't want to make any more money in the business, just wants to not work 90 hours a week. So it was like, those are my two main pain points that I'm going to be going into. And if I can identify that early, then I can kind of manipulate the conversation to be uh, more advantageous to kind of get the person to see the light. And there were different problem sets and different objections that you'd get and all kinds of stuff. So and the longer you're on an account, the easier that becomes just to kind of know. Awesome. All right. Next question. By the way, Shane, this is being recorded for a podcast. Oh, okay, killer. That's awesome. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, any questions? Any more questions? I've got one, but it's a bit out of left field. Um, Shocks. I know. <laughs> so pretty much so I've got, I've got a, a, a deal that I want to get through, right? So it's, it's something that's going to require multiple calls because it's selling 10 people into like cybersecurity certification training rather than once for a business that wants to upskill their staff so that they can then sell better for their cybersecurity. However, I had no idea how to handle that because I'm used to just doing a triage in the sales call and he's got a boss and the boss has got a boss. So like how does any PQ change when it comes to like multi-call selling and stuff like that? Because I have no idea. I was just following up with him. Good question. Um, it doesn't change. Um, you still have your phases. You just need to figure out what phases you go through in each call. Right. <clears throat> or, uh, how many people you need to get through to get to the, the boss. Right. So like the first guy, did you take him through a full sales call? No, nah, I stopped at the ideal criteria because I wasn't sure where to go. I just wanted to understand the, what, what he needed. Perfect. So your next one would be like, if you can get everybody on the call, then you go through the entire thing, but you don't pitch. Then from there, you put together like your custom presentation. They're going to go, hey, can you email me before the before the meeting? Be like, hey, I'm not really sure I, might, I would actually be able to do that. We do have a lot of requests for proposals at the moment. Um, but what I can try and do is sort of finish it, you know, I'll probably end up finishing about, you know, maybe a few hours before. So if I manage to do that, I'll send it through before a call. But if not, then we'll just kind of take you through it on the call. Like, would that be okay? Right. So that allows you, you never want to email a proposal first. You'll they'll just kill the deal automatically, no matter how good the proposal is. Right. But then from there, like if you don't get all the decision makers on the call, then you have to figure out like what's your end game for the call. If your end game is to get all the decision makers, then what you really want to do is figure out how does it benefit the people on the call to pass you up to the next guy. Okay. Right. So if they're like, if they want to do the training, right. And they want to convince their boss, it's like, why do you want to do the training? 
Like, how does that set you up for the future? Right? Mm -hmm. Because, like, it might be like, they want to get the fuck out of there. Right? Yeah. Right? Or they want it, or there's someone who won't directly benefit from the training, but the initiative of having people go through that training and the uh, upskilling of the overall company puts the company in better stead. It lowers their insurance. Like, I don't know if you know, but if like, if you don't have certain cybersecurity things in your business now, like you can't get business insurance, especially in Australia. Right. So it's like, maybe that puts the business in better standing. They're able to do X, Y, Z more. Then from there, that puts that person in a in position to where they get promoted. They get status with the boss. Mm-hmm. Right. So you have to try and figure out like, what is their motivation mm-hmm. for wanting this to progress? And then how do you, so that this gets them that. Mm-hmm. So and that's once, the intricacies of B2B. But once, once you understand like the motivation of, of why he wants that done. Like, you can also have Anthony help you out. Like if you're not sure how to do it, he's not going to take any of your comms, but like mm-hmm. you can have Anthony help you out on those calls, bring him in, let him do it for you, like with you and watch mm-hmm. him do it. Yeah. Right. And then from there, like now you're like, oh, this is how he does it. Okay, that makes sense. And then next time, you're the number one and he's the number two, so he can step in, mute you, and fix anything that you fuck up, right? <laughs> right? You know, that's what I've done. I've done that with Anthony tons of times. Like, hey, I want you to shadow me in this call. And I'm selling, you know, a management offer or something like that. And then from there, like, now he just does it by himself. Yeah. You know, so, like, that's a much easier way of doing it. Okay. And like, like, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely you know, get him to do that. Or if I still can get that organized. So in terms of like, like once you understand the motivation of, let's just say why the guy wants his team to be trained, like, and you haven't gone to the next level guy, like when do you start, like I take it on the call, you just start selling him into why he should move you up or like, how do you go about the selling to that? It's person? the same thing. You're just looking for their motivation. Like, Hey man, like, what is it that you would like out of this? And why do you want it? Like, just go through. No, like once you understand the motivation though. Then from there, you have to convince the guy to, like the sale is then pushing you to the next guy, Mm -hmm. right? So it's like setting up of next steps. So what happens if we don't end up being able to actually do this? Like what are the potential ramifications for you and the company if like we don't, we're not able to get this training to these people? people? Well, that'd be shit for these reasons. Okay, well, you know, so do you feel like, uh, so you feel like this would benefit X, Y, Z? Yes. Okay. Perfect. So from here, you know, and only if you think it's appropriate, like what we can do is go ahead and set up a next call with X, Y, Z person so that we can have a better understanding of how we can help to advance the company. Uh, and not only that, but also like you being able to X, Y, Z, would that be appropriate? Or how would you like to proceed from here? That makes sense. Right. It's just a sale within a sale, you know, like, especially when you're like working with like a big company and you're like, you're trying to get up through the ranks of like, departmental heads and stuff like that. Like it's just, it's got to benefit everyone, mm-hmm. you know, cause then they become your advocate, you know, but like, that's going to be a, you know, 150, $200,000 deal. It's like, it's not going to happen super quick. Yeah. You know? So but good job. Get her done. But yeah, just reach out to Anthony. If you have any questions and like, you're better off like, um, getting help and ensuring the deal closes than like just trying to kind of bumble through. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, all right, cool. Next question. Yeah, I got, I got one. Um, yeah. so if someone new coming into a new account, like what would be, what would be like your initial, like first thing you would suggest them to do to be in the fastest to get, get up to speed the fastest so that they're actually prepared to start yep. taking. Uh, first thing is obviously like having a very, very good understanding of the offer stack, <coughs> right? Like really, really good understanding of the offer stack. I'd probably have them, uh, I'd probably have them write the script. So like, as in take the script, right. And then rewrite it like themselves word for word, do the whole thing out, have their own version, not copy and paste it, rewrite it word for word write the entire offer stack at the beginning and then uh, re and then write their pillars and exactly how they're going to present it like uh, for each offer. You know what I mean? Then from there, I'd have them go through the portal. 
they don't have to absorb all the information, but they have to have a good idea as to what the client journey would look like. Um, and then I would have them go through all the funnels. So like, then from there, you're going to have an idea as to like, what type of prospect you have coming in, what problems the marketing is addressing, how far through the, like the levels of awareness, the prospects are going to be, um, you'd have a really good understanding of the things that you're going to be saying and the problems that you're trying to be pulling. Uh, I would also have them listen to like successful sales calls. Of like okay perfect like this is it and then from there i would do a few role plays of like where it's like the very specific role play of the regular client avatar in which that person is going to be coming up against once i had that then from there i would just kind of like let them loose i probably wouldn't fuck with them for the first week and i would set expectations you will close nobody that is totally normal this is part of it like don't don't worry about it I would also tell the business that we're working with, hey, this is a new guy. He is good, but this is obviously a new offer. I do not want to hear anything but positivity towards this human being for the next 14 days. All right? I will be managing this internally, but like no one comes in and just closes deals day one or it's very, very rare. Right? Uh, all those people have jobs. Right? So, um, so uh, like, and I would create a runway for that person to be really successful. And I would do a lot of a lot of call breakdown in that time. And then the moment they got a sale, I would have them listen to that sale over and over and over and over again. Perfect. Yeah. This will be in a podcast, so we can just. Yeah, take that's, that's why I wanted to get this. I want to get this one down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like what that does is that's like, if we have a look, it's like, okay, they have an understanding of what the client will experience when they become a client. They have an understanding of like exactly what they're getting. They know what process a client needs to go through in order to become a successful from prospect to client. And they know what they're doing to becoming from a nobody to a prospect. Like, so you've got the entire client journey there. And that is like, that's how you start to break down the understanding and the psychology of someone who's coming through because like every offer is different, you know, um, just kind of is what it is. Yeah. Uh, Gabe, uh, Gabe. Yeah, Matt, you mentioned yesterday that um, when you're listening to other people's calls, don't listen for the words, but listen for why they're saying those things, right? Yeah, yeah. But when you're breaking down your own calls, what are you, what specifically are you looking for? Because it's your own voice, you know why you did things. Like, Yeah, that's the reason you... why it's so powerful. So what you want to do is you want to have a look at your decision tree and how good it was. So that's how you like, that's how, like, that's why you really should like, you should, you should get a lot more efficient, uh, on, on accounts because like, you're only dealing with three, maybe four max type of people. Like, it's just not that there's not that much variation of everyone's an individual who comes through, but the type of person and the type of problem that comes through, it's, it's all like, you know, it's just like a Mr. Potato head type thing. Like there's just not that much variation. Right. Mm -hmm. So after a while, after enough sales calls, you can go, okay, you should be able to identify pretty quickly what type of person you're talking to and what problems they have. Therefore, what are the most obvious objections that are going to be happening from that? So, and, and, and how you do that is like, when you listen to your own call, you like, I listen, it takes a long time to review one of your own calls. Like it takes like a long time. Might have to do it over like two or three days because like what you want to do is you want to listen to it like one section of it and then go, okay, I asked it this way and I got this response. And then like, you know how like when you're in the shower and you're like pretending to have arguments with people, I think we can all agree that we do that, right? So like where you go over every iteration in your head, right? That's what you need to do. So you're like, if I asked it this way, would he have answered that differently? Or would she have answered that differently? And you're mm -hmm. like, okay. And you're like, you know what? I actually really... And then if you go up and you, cause you start to see patterns, if you listen to enough of your calls, you'll be like, okay, every time I ask it this way, I get this response. So then you're like, oh, okay, this line of questioning in this tonality and this pacing gets this answer majority of the time. So if you need that answer, you know how to say it, right? And you just go through step by step. And then like, and then what your aim is to like, just reduce. So it's like, man, what a useless question. And if you listen to 10 of your calls and you ask a question and 10 of the mm. question and 10 of the answers were useless or even eight of the answers were useless, but two were super powerful. 
that's just not a good enough ratio. So just remove it. Makes sense. Yeah. You know, then from there, you just start, you start slicing and dicing your script down to like the most effective uh, possible thing. That's where like my version of NEPQ is very different to like Jeremy's. It's the same thing, but mine's so much shorter. It's so much shorter. But like mine is very laser specific for like high ticket coaching sales and like high ticket sales and fitness, right? Like it wouldn't work as well in insurance. Like in insurance, for example, like you have to have some of the preamble at the top because like there's a lot more like logistical things that need to be done in the sale. So like my, like I would have to re acclimate myself to sell that that way. Right. Um, Yeah. But for the stuff that like most of us are selling here, like that, my way works pretty well. Um, because like, because it's such a highly emotionally charged sale, uh, like the shorter the conversation, the more chance you have of, uh, riding the emotional wave and benefiting from it. Whereas like every sort of two to three minute preamble that you have throughout the conversation stacks up to 10 to 15 minutes which then for me, I'm not able to carry that emotion as long. So for mm-hmm. me, like an ideal time to pitch is 25 minutes. 25 minutes is like, if you can pitch at 25 minutes, have a three to four minute pitch, <clears throat> wrap it up within like 35 minutes, you're totally done. You have a 45 minute call booking, you've got 10 minutes to do admin at the end, have a coffee, drink of water, whatever it is, go to the next one. Right? Makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, Jonathan. I, uh, hi, Matt. I just wanted to actually to thank you and also Shane for what you just said about the newbie because he was actually helping me out. And uh, what you just said actually just got all the anxiety and the pressure off of me starting starting off and not being afraid of messing up. So it's actually something that uh, I, I, mm-hmm. I thank you, Shane, because I was here listening and like soaking in everything without having a specific question but it like really opened my eye on just get into it you'll mess up it's okay it's part of the plan but here's a great way to start so yeah well, good thank you yeah no worries i'm gonna take it all back close the deal today no, I'm just <laughs> you're fired no, I'm just um <laughs> no it's the truth man like i think anyone that expects anyone who expects a sales rep to come in and day one knock it out of the park has a fundamentally poor understanding of how sales and marketing works. Anybody with a reasonable uh, knowledge of how these things work and how human beings operate, like, I mean, Jesus, like, that's why they have red shirt freshmen, right? Yeah. That's why they have 10 day contracts and two way contracts in the NBA. It's like some people just need the G League and the Summer League and all that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, people don't come into the NBA and knock it out of the fucking park, guys. Like, we need <laughs> – it needs to be a ramp-up period. Like, it is what it is. So um, the, the only downside is, like, unfortunately, like, we, we have to try and squeeze that time down at, like, two – say two weeks because, like, you know, there's no free leads. That's the hard part, right? So the, the, the good thing is, like, the more due diligence you do, the more work you put in, the more like calls you listen to and help you ask for and, and things you dive deep into and like really set yourself up in the highest professional manner. Um, you're putting yourself in the best possible position to be able to succeed, which is all any, it's all anyone can do. Yeah. But you got a great guy sense. to kind of lead the charge over there and Shane, like yeah, he you're, is. You're, he you're, is. In a, you're in a good, a good way. Well, thanks guys. Yeah. No worries. All right. Anything more? No? Sweet. Um, all right. Like, we don't need to go too much longer. You guys can get back to doing your lives. That was good, though, guys. That was, that was good. That was good questions. Um, sweet to the bait. If you need anything from me, let me know. Like, subscribe, and notification bell. All that kind of good stuff. Give me money in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, I'll catch you soon. Bye. Put that coffee down. down. down.